Hey, 42 here. What took us from living in caves to being an advanced, multilingual, intelligent species? It has a lot to do with just a handful of extremely crucial inventions. Let's take a look at the incredible inventions that played the biggest part in advancing the human race. First up is fire. Okay, it's not strictly an invention, more a discovery, but being the first source of warmth for humans, its importance cannot go unnoted. It's estimated that fire was discovered 1.8 million years ago, and it set the wheels in motion as it was the basis for energy for years to come. Speaking of wheels, it wasn't until 3500 BC when humans finally invented the wheel. The wheel proved to be such a crucial component of the advancement of the human race. So, why did it take humans so long to invent it? I mean by 3500 BC, it was already the Bronze Age. Humans were casting metal alloys, building sailboats, and even complex musical instruments such as the harp. So, what took them so long? Well, the problem with the wheel was not getting a cylindrical object to roll on its side. Anyone could do that. It was attaching that cylinder to a stationary platform, so it could move freely and independently without rolling off down the hill. This is known as the wheel and axle design. To achieve this, a lot of factors have to be gotten right, such as the circumference of the axles has to be perfectly smooth as does the hole in the centre of the wheel, otherwise there will be too much friction and the wheels won't turn. Even more challenging, the axles have to fit snugly inside the wheels, but not too snugly or they won't rotate freely. Inventors would also need access to very large slabs of wood from a large tree in order to carve a large wheel from it. The wheel was certainly a huge challenge. All these factors and more is why humans took so long to invent the wheel. It's not something that would have just happened overnight, and it likely only happened once. But once it was discovered, it spread very quickly over the rest of Europe. The wheel's most likely birthplace was either Eastern Europe or Mesopotamia, but historians can't quite agree on a precise location. The wheel was so vitally important because it gave birth to modern day farming, which made us less nomadic and freed up people's time so that they could focus on discovering new inventions. Imagine you're far out at sea, travelling to a far off land, the ocean currents are pulling your boat in every direction. You no longer know which way is north, south, east or west. You have nothing but your boat to guide you. What happens? You will probably end up going gravely off course, or even more likely just go round and round in circles for days until you run out of water and die at sea. This was what happened to many a sailor in the thousands of years between the invention of the boat and the navigational device to guide them. The world was full of people getting lost at sea, and the whole thing was a bloody mess until the 11th century when Han Dynasty China invented the very first maritime compass. The first compass used a lodestone, which is a naturally magnetised iron ore. The compass quickly spread throughout the rest of the world via maritime contact, and so finally people could safely traverse the seas and travel far away from their homelands to distant new worlds, opening up new trade routes and starting the age of discovery. It was the desire for knowledge that took us from being hunter-gatherers to where we are now. Nothing excels the technological advancement of a species more than the sharing of knowledge. But in the 15th century, how would you go about sharing knowledge? There's no internet or phones, so people relied on books. But for many centuries, books had to be painstakingly handwritten one by one. This meant books were very expensive, and knowledge was severely limited for the majority of the population. And for a long time, this proved to be a major brick wall standing in the way of the progress of mankind. 
What was really needed was an abundance of books, so human knowledge could be shared freely and quickly. And that's what the much needed printing press gave to the human race when it was invented in the 15th century. Although the first movable type system was created in 11th century Song Dynasty China, the complexity of the Chinese writing system stopped it from gaining much traction. It wasn't until the 15th century when Johannes Gutenberg invented the first Western movable type printing press in Germany that the idea of mass printing really caught on. Gutenberg cast individual letters and punctuation marks out of various metals, which was a vast improvement on the Chinese system that used wooden blocks. Gutenberg's printing press exponentially increased the speed at which copies of books could be made, which led to a rapid increase in the spread of knowledge across Europe. In 1859, a Belgian engineer called Etienne Lenoir created one of the most revolutionary pieces of engineering to date, the internal combustion engine. This engineering masterpiece replaced the dated steam engine to become the de facto standard for powering the world's machinery and transportation systems. The internal combustion engine works by burning fuel in a combustion chamber. The high pressure gas which is created then pushes a piston, thereby transforming chemical energy into useful mechanical energy. The internal combustion engine gave birth to countless modern technologies, but most notably modern day cars and aircraft. Next up is the telephone. Although it had many pioneers, it was Alexander Graham Bell who was awarded the first patent for the electric telephone in 1876. Bell's goal was to make a telephone that was affordable to everyone. Before this, electric communications, such as the electric telegraph, were horrendously expensive and were only used by the very wealthy. Bell changed this, and very soon there was a telephone in nearly every home, business and learning institution. This enabled instantaneous communication and revolutionised the way we communicate with the rest of the world. The telephone catalyzed international business and accelerated human learning. In later years, the telephone system would also become the building blocks for the internet. Next up is the very foundation that powers the entire world we live in today, electricity. Humans have always been aware of electricity and its power. Ancient Egyptian texts dating back to 2750 BC talk about people getting shocks from electric fish, such as the catfish and the electric ray. But it wasn't until Thomas Edison created the first practical, long-lasting electric light bulb in 1879 that electricity transformed from being just a scientific curiosity to an essential tool for modern life. Following Edison's invention, a whole multitude of other electrical devices quickly followed in the years to come. Nothing has altered the face of technology like the discovery and practical applications of electrical power. In 1928, a Scottish scientist called Alexander Fleming was experimenting with bacteria in his laboratory when he discovered something that would change the world. He noticed that one of his petri dishes filled with bacteria had become contaminated with mould. And everywhere the mould had spread, the bacteria was dead. What was this mysterious mould that had the ability to stop bacteria dead in its tracks? It turned out to be a fungus called penicillium. Over the next two decades, chemists purified the fungus and eventually turned it into the drug penicillin, the world's first antibiotic. Penicillin proved to be the magic bullet for a whole load of previously deadly diseases. This new miracle cure could fight off infections without doing any harm to most humans. Fleming's discovery forever changed the way that we treat diseases. British mathematician and inventor Charles Babbage invented the first computer in the year 1832. It contained processes which Babbage called mills and a memory which he called the store. 
just like in modern computers. But unfortunately, Babbage was way ahead of his time. It wouldn't be until over a hundred years later, in 1971, when the world's first personal computer was manufactured and sold. It was called the Kembak One and sold for $750. Ever since then, computer technology has accelerated at an unprecedented rate and subsequently so has human knowledge and our technological accomplishments. Just like the Abacus did thousands of years ago, the personal computer outsourced the tasks of complex mathematics and problem solving to machines. The computer was so influential to human development that it accelerated us into a brand new age, the information age. And finally, you can't talk about the personal computer without, of course, talking about the internet. No other invention has shaped the way that we go about our daily lives as much as the internet. We now heavily rely on the internet for shopping, business, relationships, entertainment, creativity and general human communications. English computer scientist Sir Tim Berners-Lee invented the World Wide Web in 1989 whilst working at CERN. He then wrote the very first HTTP web client and server in 1990. Berners-Lee also founded the World Wide Web Consortium, which is responsible for maintaining the international standards for URLs, HTTP, HTML and CSS, or to put it more simply, the technology that the entire internet runs on. We still use those same standards and technologies to this day. So in a movement that could be considered both scary and exciting at the very same time, the internet changed humankind like nothing before it. And as the internet and the way that we use it evolves every year, so too does the human race. Thanks for the view, subscribe for more 42.